Hey guys, this is Landon with the Command Valley, bringing you another Commander deck tech. Thank you to GameGrid for sponsoring this video. If you want to check out their new and improved store and support the channel while doing it, check out the link in the description below. We have a copy and pasteable deck list in the description that you can paste right into their deck builder and buy your singles there. If you want to support this channel directly, head on over to Patreon at patreon.com slash commandvalley to sign up today. I'm super stoked for today's deck. It's one that I've had a ton of fun with and it is Tuvasa the Sunlit. So if you're unfamiliar with Tuvasa, let's take a look at her and see what she does. She is a legendary creature Merfolk Shaman that costs a green, a white, and a blue. And she reads, Tuvasa the Sunlit gets plus one plus one for each enchantment you control. And whenever you cast your first enchantment spell each turn, draw a card. So she is a super powerful enchantment commander. So she wants you to be playing a high density of enchantments and she gets stronger the more enchantments that you have. So the route that I've taken is a full-on Enchantress deck with a lot of Voltron. We're wanting to suit Tuvasa up with a lot of enchantments, and we're wanting to use Tuvasa to take our opponents out of the game. So we've got tons of ways of making her really strong and making her super hard to block. I've always loved the Enchantress archetype, and I was waiting a long time for an actual Enchantress commander. There have been a couple others in the past, but honestly, I think Tuvasa is one of the better ones, and we've gotten a lot of support for the Enchantress archetype in the past couple of sets, so I've decided to revisit the deck. So let's start off with the ramp spells. So we are using a bunch of enchantment spells because tons of synergy with the deck. So we've got Fertile Ground, Wild Growth, Overgrowth, Utopia Sprawl, and one with nature and dawn's reflection. Each of these enchantments can be put on one of our lands and can give us more mana. We've also got rampant growth and soul ring just as more generic ramp just to kind of round out the edges. I think that these are kind of flex spots. If you like the other creatures that make your enchantments cost one less, like Herald of the Pantheon or Starfield Mystic or Transcendent Envoy, those are really good includes too, but I just went with these ones. And then we have Corso of Crufix, which I don't necessarily consider to be ramp because we don't get more lands into play without Corso of Crufix, but we can play lands off the top of our library and it is an enchantment, so it triggers Tuvasa and it triggers all of our other enchantress effects. The next category we have is the Enchantress category. Each of these cards reward us for playing enchantments with pure raw card draw. So we've got Eidolon of Blossoms, Satustan Champion, Mesa Enchantress, Seder Enchanter, Verduran Enchantress, Core Spirit Dancer, and Enchantress's Presence. All of these cards are super similar to each other and that redundancy really makes this deck very consistent and very powerful. If we can stick two of these on the table, we're gonna be drawing so many cards. With over 39 enchantments in this deck, we are going to be drawing a ton of cards. All right, next up we've got some other cards that provide us with other card advantage through just pure card draw or tutors or recursion. So we've got Cold Eyed Selkie, which I really like this card. It's probably a little pet card of mine. So Cold Eyed Selkie has Island Walk and it's a 1-1. So if, if the defending player controls an island, it, they just can't even block Cold Eyed Selkie. And whenever it deals combat damage to a player, we draw that many cards. So if for whatever reason we don't have Tuvasa or we want to really pump up Cold Eyed Selkie with the aur auras instead of Tuvasa, this can draw us a ton of cards. We then have Heliod's Pilgrim, which can, when it enters a battlefield, can let us search our library for any aura and put it right into our hand. We're going to go over the auras a little later, but this is a super powerful card, and it's super efficient at only 3 mana. We then have Auramancer, which can get an enchantment back from our graveyard into our hand, which is super useful. And then we have two tutors with Idyllic Tutor and Eladarmi's Call. So Idyllic Tutor, essentially, we're going to want to be using this to find our enchantress effects because most of our enchantresses are enchantments themselves. But we'll go over this later, but we have a ton of ways of interacting with our opponents in the form of enchantments. And this can we can use Idyllic Tutor to search for those two if we need to remove a piece from our opponent's boards. Eladarmi's Call is super nice. It's instant speed and we can tutor for any creature in our deck. Again, some of our enchantresses are creatures and I can't stress enough how important it is that we can get those cards as quickly as possible and get them down on the table because one problem with auras is you may have learned from other formats is when you go to put an aura on a creature, your opponents can actually respond to that by destroying the creature and then you've lost the creature and the aura. We call that getting two for one. So these enchantresses are super important because it breaks that parity of two for one even if our opponents kill the creature that we're trying to enchant because we're still going to draw multiple cards off of casting the aura and hopefully we'll draw into more auras that we can then play and draw more cards. So it's kind of like a train that keeps rolling. So that's why the enchantresses are super important. All right, let's go over the auras. We've got a ton of them. So 
Let's start with Ancestral Mask, All That Glitters, and Ethereal Armor. Each of these are very similar to Tuvasa, actually. Ancestral Mask gives the enchanted creature plus two plus two for each other enchantment on the battlefield, and All That Glitters counts the artifacts as well that we control, which we only have one, and Ethereal Armor does the same thing, but it also gives the creature first strike. So we can put these on Tuvasa, and we're basically tripling her effect that gives, you know, that gives her plus one plus one for each other enchantment on the table. We then have Steel of the Godhead and Shield of the Oversoul. I think these enchantments are super cool. They give the enchanted creature an ability based off of what color they are. Shield of the Oversoul, as long as the creature is green, gives it plus one, plus one and indestructible. And as long as it's white, it gets plus one, plus one and flying. So this is going to give Tuvasa indestructible and flying. So that will get it over our opponent's defenses so we can get in for that damage. And then Steel of the Godhead gives it lifelink as long as it's white and unblockable as long as it's blue. So this, again, is so useful for making Tuvasa very difficult for our opponents to block. We then have Aquaeus form, which this is a super efficient aura at one mana. The enchanted creature cannot be blocked and whenever it attacks, we can scry. And then Armadillo Cloak gives the enchanted creature plus two plus two and trample. And whenever the enchanted creature deals damage, we gain that much life. So it gives it trample and lifelink. So Trample is almost as good as unblockable. It makes it so even if our opponents try to chump block it, they're still going to be taking a lot of damage from Tuvasa. Canopy Cover is very powerful. The enchanted creature can't be blocked except by creatures with flying or reach, and the enchanted creature can't be the targets of spells or abilities your opponents control. So Tuvasa is going to be a very large target and it's a very large threat to our opponent. So being able to make it not targetable by spells and abilities our opponents control is huge. It feels really bad suiting Tuvasa up with five or six auras just to have her get destroyed. Next up, we have Daybreak Coronet. For us to be able to enchant a creature with this, it already has to have another aura on it, and the enchanted creature gets plus three, plus three, first strike, vigilance, and lifelink. So for two mana, this is super powerful. And vigilance is really important because we're not playing a high density of creatures, so tapping out with our strongest creature being Tuvasa sometimes can be a little risky. So being able to attack with her and hold her up as a blocker is really powerful. Next up, we have On Sarah's Wings, which is a legendary enchantment. The enchanted creature becomes legendary. It gets plus one, plus one, and has flying, vigilance, and lifelink. So this is kind of a little bit more expensive version of Daybreak Coronet, but it does give the creature flying. So that's super useful for getting Tuvasa in to take our opponents out. We then have Rancor, which is a really efficient aura. The enchanted creature gets plus two plus oh and trample and when rancor is put into a graveyard from the battlefield we can return rancor back to our hand this is useful for several reasons if tuvasa gets destroyed or the creature attached to it gets destroyed it can come back to our hand and we can cast it again which will trigger our enchantresses again which if you know we don't have any cards left in our hand and we need to draw more cards this can be super useful to reset that Next up, we have Unquestioned Authority and Spirit Mantle. Both of these auras give the enchanted creature protection from creatures, which basically makes them unblockable. So if we put this on Tuvasa, no matter how many creatures our opponents have, they cannot block Tuvasa. And randomly, if our opponents have any creatures that can deal damage or can bounce things or any type of ability that can interact with other creatures, they cannot target Tuvasa with that. We then have Vow of Flight, which can give the enchanted creature plus two, plus two and flying and it can't attack you or a planeswalker you control. So that last part is only there if we want to maybe enchant another player's creature. I don't know why we would. We're gonna wanna put this on Tuvasa to give her flying so she can fly over our opponent's creatures. And then we have Eel Umbra, which is not the strongest aura, but it has a flash and it gives the creature totem armor. So I like this with flash because Tuvasa only lets us draw one enchantment per turn with her ability. So if we can cast enchantments at instant speed, we can trigger her ability on other players' turns to get extra value. And totem armor is also really nice because if the enchanted creature would be destroyed, instead you remove all damage from it and you just destroy the eel umbra. So if somebody is going to play a board wipe and we've got a ton of auras on Tuvasa, this totem armor is going to save Tuvasa and all of our auras. And finally, we have Alpha Authority. It is an aura. It gives the enchanted creature hexproof and it can't be blocked by more than one creature. So I really only put it in here for the hexproof, but it is really nice that it can't be blocked by more than one creature. Let's say our opponents have a large army of, you know, one, one tokens. They can't just chump Tuvasa out and kill her with a small army of creatures. They can only block her with one creature. All right, the next category that I have is alternate win cons than Tuvasa because we can't always 
We don't want to have Tuvasa be the only card in the deck that can win us the game. We don't want to be a one-trick pony. We've got some other ways in the deck to finish our opponent. So we've got Archon of Sun's Grace, which is one of the newer cards that have come into the archetype of Enchantress. It is a creature Archon with flying and lifelink, and it gives all Pegasus creatures we have lifelink, not super relevant, but it has Constellation, which says, whenever an enchantment enters the battlefield under our control, we create a 2-2 white Pegasus creature token with flying. So... This rewards us doubly in addition to our enchantresses for playing enchantments because it's going to give us flyers that we can use for blockers or attackers or we can enchant these pegasus with our really powerful enchantments and take our opponents out that way. We then have Nylea's Colossus, which has an constellation ability that says whenever Nylea's Colossus or another enchantment enters a battlefield under your control, double target creature's power and toughness until the end of turn. So let's say we have Tuvasa out on the table with a bunch of enchantments on her, maybe two or three, and she's pretty powerful. And then we drop Nylea's Colossus down on the table. We're going to double Tuvasa's power, and we can double it a couple more times throughout the turn if we've got a bunch of enchantments in our hand. This can end the game very quickly. We then have a Johnny's Chosen, which is very similar to Archon of Sun's Grace. Whenever an enchantment enters a battlefield under our control, we make a 2-2 white cat creature token. If the enchantment is an aura, we can attach the aura right to the token. That's a nice added ability, but we're really playing this card so we can make a bunch of cats. We then have Duelist Heritage, which is a super cool enchantment, and it reads, Whenever one or more creatures attack, you may have target attacking creature gain double strike until the end of turn. So if we've got Tuvasa up to 10 or 11 power, which really is not difficult in our deck, we can give her double strike, and due to commander damage, that'll just take an opponent out right then and there. Next up, we have Finest Hour, which is an enchantment with the ability Exalted. So whenever a creature you control attacks alone, that creature gets plus one, plus one until end of turn. And whenever a creature you control attacks alone, if it's the first combat phase of the turn, untap that creature. After this phase, there is an additional combat phase. So this can give us two attacks with Tuvasa, which a lot of times, if she's unblockable and strong enough, that's just going to take an opponent out of the game. And then finally, we have Eutropia the Twice Favored. She is another one of those new creatures that came out in Theros. And she has the Constellation ability that reads, whenever an enchantment enters the battlefield under your control, put a plus one plus one counter on target creature, and that creature gains flying until the end of turn. So, and I like that it's a plus one plus one counter. I think if it was just a plus one plus one buff until end of turn, I don't think it would be as good, but that's really nice. And we can give the creature flying, so we can make Tuvasa a little bit stronger and make it so she can fly over our opponent's creatures and smack him in the face. All right, now let's go over the interaction. We've got tons of enchantments that can deal with our opponent's side of the board, so let's start off with Mystic Subduel. This is a new card from Ikoria, and I really like it because it has flash, like I said earlier. It's super cool to be able to trigger two Vasa on our opponent's turns, and the enchanted creature gets minus two, minus zero, and loses all abilities. So if we can put this on our opponent's commander and make them lose their abilities, that's going to really slow them down. Law Mage's Binding is super similar to Mystic Subduel. It costs a little bit more mana, but it has flash and the enchanted creature can't attack or block and its abilities can't be activated. So a little different. If it has an activated ability, it doesn't work. If it has a triggered ability, that can still happen or a static ability, but it's still a super good card. We then have Casmina's Transmutation, Kenrith's Transformation, and Darksteel Mutation. Each of these have a little bit of benefit with Kenrith's Transformation being able to draw us a card. Basically, these turn a really scary creature into a less threatening creature, or it just completely incapacitates a creature. We then have Imprisoned in the Moon, which is a little bit more pricey than our other transmutation abilities. But this turns the enchanted creature into a land, which is a little bit better than the other ones because that because they can just block with the frog or the elk that we give them. They can't really block with a land, so this is a super this is also really powerful. We then have Banishing Light and Oblivion Ring, which when they enter the battlefield, they can exile any permanent our opponent's control. They do come back when the enchantments leave, but that's not a super big deal. Hopefully, by the time that's even relevant, we've won the game. And then we have Winds of Wrath and Winds of Abandon. Winds of Wrath is literally made for this deck. It destroys destroys all creatures that aren't enchanted and they can't be regenerated so this can be a game ending board wipe because it's going to blow up all of our opponent's creatures it's going to leave Tuvasa completely intact and we can just keep swinging with her. Winds of Abandon can exile a creature we don't control and then they search your library for a basic land and put it into play or we can overload it to exile all of our opponent's creatures. They do get lands for all those creatures but honestly this can save us in a pinch if our opponents have a massive board state. 
Then we have Soul Snare, which is a super underrated enchantment, I feel like. It just sits on the table, and we can pay one white mana to sacrifice it to exile target creature that's attacking you or a planeswalker you control. So with this on the table and our opponents can see it, that can probably deter a lot of attacks because they don't want to lose their best creature. So it's kind of a give and take because if we actually want to remove a creature, like we actively need to get rid of something, it doesn't really do that. But if we want to keep our opponents from attacking us, it's pretty good at that. And then finally, we have Karametra's Blessing, which is just an extra way of protecting Tuvasa. Target creature gets plus two, plus two until end of turn. And if it's an enchanted creature or enchantment creature, it also gains hexproof and indestructible until end of turn. I like that it gets indestructible so Tuvasa can survive a board wipe. The hexproof is nice to survive maybe some spot removal, but I think being able to come out of a board wipe with Tuvasa still on the table is super powerful. And for the next category, we have just the bonus synergy category. This is just my catch-all. I didn't really know where to put these cards, but they're still really important in the deck. So let's start off with Destiny Spinner. In fact, the more I look at this card, I think this could also be categorized as an alternate win condition, but it makes it so all of our creature and enchantment spells can't be countered, which is so powerful. And it has an activated ability for three and a green, and it says target land you control becomes an XX elemental creature with trample and haste until end of turn, where X is the number of enchantments you control. So we can basically turn one of our lands into a mini Tuvasa minus the card draw ability, which is super powerful. Next up, we have Umber Mystic, which is a creature that gives auras attached to permanents we control totem armor. So this is probably one of the better creatures in the, in the deck. This is a super powerful effect. It's a really good card. I don't know what else to say. And next up, we have Protean Thaumaturge. Pretty sure I butchered that pronunciation. Someone in the comments, tell me how to pronounce that word. It has a constellation ability, which says whenever an enchantment enters a battlefield under your control, you may have Protean Thaumaturge become a copy of another target creature, except it has this ability. So we can make it become a copy of our opponent's best creatures. We can have it become a copy of one of our enchantress abilities. I mean, there's a lot of potential for this card. I think it has a lot of utility and it's super efficiently costed at only two mana. Next up, we have Mirror Maid, which I honestly feel like is a super underrated and underpriced card. And it's an enchantment that when it enters a battlefield, we can have it enter as a copy of any artifact or enchantment on the battlefield. So your opponents have a Rhystic Study. Now you have a Rhystic Study. Your opponents have a Bolas' Citadel or a Thousand Year Storm. Now you have a Bolas' Citadel or a Thousand Year Storm or a Necropotence or a Helm of the Host, or any powerful artifact or enchantment your opponents are playing. So it's a super versatile card, and at three mana and only two dollars, I think it's a super powerful card. And finally, we have a couple of ways of making a little bit of a pillow fort, making it so we can survive long enough until we can suit Tuvas up enough to win the game, and we've got Sphere of Safety, Ghostly Prison, and Propaganda. Sphere of Safety makes it so creatures can't attack us or Planeswalker we control unless their controller pays X, for each of those creatures where x is the number of enchantments we control that is going to make it utterly unreasonable for our opponents to want to attack us unless they have that much mana left but really they're not going to be able to get through this sphere of safety and the propaganda and ghostly prison just tax their creatures by two per creature so not as powerful but they don't cost as much and they're still super good cards all right next up let's go over the mana base so i'm playing eight forests Nine Plains, Three Islands, and then Azorius Guildgate, Blossoming Sands, Elfheim Palace, Evolving Wilds, Grey Pelt Refuge, Meandering River, Seaside Citadel, Sejiri Refuge, Selesnia Guildgate, Simic Guildgate, Terramorphic Expanse, Thornwood Falls, Tranquil Cove, Tranquil Expanse, and Woodland Stream, and finally, Rogue's Passage. I wanted to talk a little bit about Rogue's Passage. It has an activated ability where we can pay four and tap it and target creature becomes unblockable until end of turn. That is probably one of the best lands in the deck because it can get two Voss in and close out the game. You'll notice we're playing a lot of tap lands. If you have the luxury of having a lot of shock lands or other expensive lands, feel free to just throw them in as you see fit. I kind of stick with the budget lands just for this deck and I kind of feel like the deck functions super well even on a budget so even just with budget tap lands the deck is nuts. Thank you guys so much for watching this video we really appreciate it. I hope you have as much fun playing and building I hope you have as much fun building and playing this deck as I have. Like I said I love Enchantress. I actually played an Enchantress deck in one of our previous Duel of the Peaks episodes with uh, Siona, Captain of Pileus. Super similar, super similar deck, both of them enchantress that care about auras. So if you want to see kind of how an enchantress deck plays, you can go watch that episode. We'll have a link for that in the description of this video. And this is just another quick reminder that if you want to support us directly, you can go over to patreon.com slash command valley. And we've got a ton of super awesome perks. We really 
want to build a awesome community with the Command Valley and we really appreciate your guys' support. You get access to exclusive content, Discord, merch, and lots of other perks. Another reminder that if you're going to buy this deck, we really suggest using that link down in the bio. GameGrid has an awesome deck building tool and it helps the channel out a lot and they now ship nationwide so you can get your singles from wherever you live in the nation. Also, a something that we're starting is live streams every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. Run us for some Brawl on Arena. Super entertaining. And don't forget to follow us at, on Twitter at Command Valley P1 and like us on Facebook. And all the links for our social medias are down in the description below. Again, thank you guys so much. Thank you to all the patrons and all the subscribers. We really appreciate your guys' support. And I hope you guys have an amazing week.